cats, it's Charlie with Reporter Chicks. I'm actually just hanging out at Catfish Plantation today, having some coffee, doing a little research to try to find some new locations to bring to you guys. Mike is on location tonight in Methuen, am I saying that right? Massachusetts at Tenny Gate House. He's got Chris Gartland, Andy Andrews, and Cece the Huntress. Why don't y'all go check in and see what they're doing and I'll catch up with you later. Well, it looks like they're ready to get the night started. I think Mike's going to start out with Joe Bella. He's the caretaker at Tenny Gate House. Let's see what he has to say about the history of the location. My name is Joe Bella, and uh, I'm president of the Methuen Historical Society here up in Methuen, Massachusetts. I've been president of this organization, I think, around uh, eight years, maybe going on nine years. And it's a great um, group of people. Uh, I have a board of directors of about 18 people and uh, vice president, treasurer, and so forth. Um, our prime function is to maintain and take care of what's commonly known in these parts as the Tenney Gatehouse, which originally um, was built in 1830 as a farmhouse uh, built by the Whittier family. And the Whittier family are descendants of uh, John Greenleaf Whittier, the poet from uh, Haverhill. And uh, Methuen uh, was once part of Haverhill until 1726 and then it broke away from um, what was then known as the western part of the, uh, the township of uh, Haverhill, Massachusetts. Uh, so getting back to the gatehouse, um, this was commonly known as the Whittier Farm um, until about 1882. The um, Charles H. Tenney and uh, his family um, had moved from Salem, New Hampshire and settled in Methuen about um, around the Civil War, just before the Civil War era, 1850s on. Um, Mr. Tenney uh, married uh, Fanny Gleason and uh, Fanny's father had a hat factory. And Mr. Tenney acquired the hat factory from his father-in-law and began the manufacture of hats here in uh, Methuen. Did quite well, so that in 1882, Mr. Tenney was able to purchase for the family uh, this um, building and about roughly 40 plus acres in back of the building. And um, in the 1890s, he built his castle, which we, we refer to as Tenney Castle, and uh, he named the place um, Great Court. And how the building got its name, the gatehouse, is that um, after the mansion was built and the family left the uh, building, this building, the gatehouse, the um, gatehouse was turned into a gatehouse and a gate was built to the, if you're facing the building, the right hand side of the building, a uh, beautiful black red iron gate which was recently restored. Um, the, the gate was installed and you'll see two giant letters on either gate, letter T, standing for, uh, stands for Tenny and the family hired gatekeepers. Um, they hired families to stay here uh, continuously so that the building um, got its nickname, the Tenney Gatehouse. Behind us here it was once located the mansion. Uh, it, unfortunately, it burned on April 7th, 1977. Uh, and then the building was, what was left of the building was um, taken down by the uh, town later, city of Methuen. Um, after the um, agreement was made for the state to purchase the property. Uh, they did maintain it and through various phases of um, restoration uh, these past four or five years the state has uh, maintained the park and also named it Great Court State Park. Uh, again it's a state park open to the public from dawn to dusk. All I 
like to do is just have these groups come in, different par paranormal groups come in, and I'd, I'd like to uh, get a sense of, of what they feel uh, once they have gone through the investigations. And uh, I also like to have the, um, the group themselves or the, or the participants email me um, any interesting pictures that they may have uh, come across and I have a, a binder that I put together just showing what people have found through um, special photography or any sort of uh, photographic effects of their visit here at the gatehouse. Uh, although I did have a, an experience occur, in fact I, I would have to say before 2002 I might have been called a, a disbeliever or a non-believer. I'm a Catholic, Roman Catholic by uh, religion, but I, I consider myself open to um, whatever is out there. And of course, there's a lot that we don't know out there. No one knows everything about everything. And either fortunately or unfortunately, we tend to learn these things from experience. And from what I experienced, um, I, I experienced two events. Uh, one which occurred up in the back bedroom, second floor, and it had to do with some uh, lit wall sconces and that was one, one experience. And another experience uh, which, I, which occurred to me was the glass divination um, process, which I had um, experienced for the first time. And I tried Ouija boards in the past and nothing happened. Uh, they did not prove successful. Could have been the location. Um, I hadn't done anything about that here. But my first glass divination was done here and it was quite an experience one of which I'll never forget. And I was able to bring um, residents, uh, non-living residents of the gatehouse uh, into the forefront um, through glass divination. And so much so that um, it, it was unbelievable how, how that worked out. We did use a uh, two slips of paper. One slip of paper had a uh, yes and one slip of paper had a no written on it. And we used those on the uh, sort of on a similar to the idea of a Ouija board, and I just have to say that worked out perfectly. Uh, questions were answered, and uh, I just have to say it was a fantastic uh, situation. So those two events really uh, affected me uh, in, in, a, in a, a large, a large way as far as um, my believing and non-believing in, in uh, things that go on in this particular location. Uh, again, the, the wall sconces in the rear bedroom, um, it, quite an event that, uh, uh, that evening, and that was about two years ago, uh, one, one evening. And then again, the, the, my first glass divination was a knockout. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. It was a complete knockout, and I was just baffled on, on, on what happened to that glass. And it just spun around on that table like it was just... <laughs> alive. I don't know, it's just fantastic. And that's the only way you can describe it. Hi, I'm Cece the Hunters and I'm here at the Tenney Gatehouse in Methuen, Massachusetts, ready for an exciting time. We are going to rock this place tonight. We are going to try to catch ourselves some ghosts. I'm going to be talking about metaphysics, I'm going to be talking about high-tech equipment and how I blend the two of them together and bring it straight for you. Also got a line of products to show you. Hope you like, like to purchase some of those too. That'd be great for me and put my kids through college. I'm excited. I've got a big hello for Charlie. Hey, Charlie, how are you? And again, we are at the Tenney Gatehouse in Methuen, Massachusetts. I am Cece the Hunters. You can go to cecthehunters.com and read all about me. The only one with ghost hunter that go, uh, hunts for ghosts alone and uh, catches them too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.
it turns out to just be I very, very far yeah. and few between, yeah. Yeah. I would exactly. say. I do know yeah. with my experience in working with uh, Father Gallagher, who has passed away, who was uh, the gentleman who had the bishop's files, and he mentored uh, Liam Peter Blatty, who wrote the book on oh, Exorcist, yeah. subsequently the movie. But even in those bishop's files that he read on the year that I have uh, proved to have the tapes of, he was saying that the percentage is like three every maybe even 30 years just to even look into it is so rare so if people are saying they have that well, they better be on a five o'clock news mm -hmm. because yeah. that's how rare it truly is exactly. I'm, I'm a firm believer in uh you are in debt that you were in something upstairs. <laughs> That's the caterer. Sounds like someone walking. Furniture sliding. House rules. What did you experience? Paranormal, non paranormal, whatever? Well, it's still hard to know. So we were both sitting next to each other and we were just kind of staring out. And we couldn't see anything. We, couldn't okay. see, we were literally arm to arm and we couldn't you could see, see space. Okay. And we both saw a flash of light. I kind of thought it was between, she was here and I was next to her, so I thought it was kind of between us. And so first I thought it was, my, I asked if it was her cell phone, mm -hmm. and it wasn't mine because I had mine upside down so the light wouldn't do that. All right. And it was two very quick, bright flashes of light. I thought Are it was we lightning, but there was no, like, there weren't windows or any cracks or anything. Interesting. So, I now see, I haven't been up there. That is actually <laughs> kind of off limits a little bit, we were, but I'm glad you guys went up there. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Can I add something real quick to this? Yes, please and do. Only, only because we have been in there and yep. we have investigated up there, which you could have been seeing, and I'm not, not trying to down you or anything, what you could have been seeing is the flashes from the cameras downstairs. Because there's light that filters through all these cracks, especially when you get into the attic. You know, we ran into that a lot with the IR cameras. You know, we were catching our investigators. Well, I was, I was yeah. flashing in that little closet thing. Oh, yeah. Right over there. Oh, they weren't in the tower room. They were right there. Right yeah, the door right to the left. But oh, my, okay. my, my, so my question is this. At that point, we now go to the positioning of the light. Right. Right. Did you feel that it lit up the whole room? Or no. did you feel like it was a focused light? I thought it was my. I thought it was a cell phone LED that was going okay. off, like we got an got an email or a phone call, and it was. It didn't originate from the floor. We were sitting next to each other. Yeah. And I mean, it very could very well could have been something that came up through a crack. I mean, obviously there's plenty right. of holes in these mm -hmm. floors, but it was two very quick ones, faster than I think a flash would have been. It was more like the LED cool. notification. Okay. And nice. She th once I once we heard you guys say come out, I turned my phone screen on just kind of illuminated. Sure. It was pitch dark in there, mm. and when she looked forward, she's like, oh, there's no window over there. She had thought she had seen the. Okay. With the pushing, from what I'm telling you, you're dealing with an you know you got some kind of entity here because right. you're trying to make that aspect of communication. The fact that the, what really makes me curious about what happened to you guys is the fact that you keep going to the fact that you felt like it was between you, that it was there. It wasn't there. It wasn't there. It was here. It was close to you. And for me, that is almost a form of communication. You know, hey, look at me. I'm here. Hey.
Wayne, George, Paul. We can ask questions too as well. Yeah. It usually helps people answer you sometimes. Paul. That's male, female. Blake. Name. Larry. Name Larry. Yeah, basically what it does is a has like a, it generates words based on environmental changes and when you start to hear patterns or it seems to answer your questions, it could be What's something What's your name? Wrong. I see. Okay. Angle. No, angle. Is there more than one of you here? Angle. You don't want to speak now? It. It. What are your names? I. Fell. Did you fall? What's your name? Are you a man or a woman? Is it okay we ask you questions? for yes, blink twice for no. Now, for over thousands and thousands of years, they've been using dowsing rods. Dowsing rods detect energy, whether it's water, minerals, electricity, boundary lines under the ground. My ex-husband has these in his truck. He's a surveyor. And when his digital equipment goes awry, he uses the dowsing rods. And, uh, they never fail at you because uh, they're accurate. But you've got to use common sense when you use any of these uh, pieces of equipment. You cannot stand near water main because they're going to start to swing with the water main. can't stand on a pot of gold because they're going to look for the gold. These are really good to find gold. I've yet to find it, though. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully someday I will. There's <laughs> a lot in Rhode Island. Yeah. A lot of gold. What part of Rhode Island? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. We've <laughs> we'll head over there next at 2 in the morning. We'll be following you home. <laughs> but what I like to do is bring a, a mixture of high tech and metaphysics together. Because 200 years ago, before electricity, what did they use? They used their bodies, they used candles, they used powder, they used different types of things for spirit communication. And these rumors and these spirits that they found in ghosts 200 years ago. We're verifying them right now, today, on the different ghost shows with the high-tech equipment. They were there, and they were found originally by the way um, I'm going to teach you with metaphysics. You can use mine. They're big. <laughs> now, don't let them move. Hold them tight. Okay, mm -hmm. hold one a little higher than the other in case they want to cross. I feel some kind of like sickness. <laughs> I can feel. Yeah, yeah. I know he's going to get me Everything's okay, right? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to call for? Who are you going to 
going forward? Well, what we're going to do is try to contact one of your relatives that passed away or a pet. Because oh, okay. um, the spirits in Tenny Gate House here, they don't know who you are. So why would they want to communicate with you? You're going to find relatives are more eager to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. But then they might be off visiting other relatives. Mm -hmm. A pet's really great because they're pretty loyal. Oh, I just but lost a cat about eight weeks ago. Buddy. Keep them safe. Buddy? Mm -hmm. Boy? Yes. Call him forward now. Buddy, are you here? Just like you talk to him in life, ask him to move the dowsing rods. Buddy, can you move the dowsing rods if you move them? Come on, buddy, move the dowsing rods. It's not every day you call the dead for. Ask him to move the dowsing rods. Buddy, can you move the dowsing rods? Ask him to move the dowsing rods. Can you move them again, buddy? Relax. Ask him to move the dowsing rods. Move the dowsing rods. Buddy. Was he a cat that listened to you when you called him? Mm -hmm. Ask him to move the dowsing rods. Buddy, move the dowsing rods for me, please. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. You Are you here, wiggling buddy. this one? Yeah. Okay. Ask him again. Just keep buddy, calling him forward. Buddy, can you please move the dowsing rods for me? Just let me know you're here. Can you move the dowsing rods? Buddy, come to mommy. Come to mommy, buddy. Are you making her do this? No? Okay. Can you feel them heating up? A little bit. Ask you again to move the dowsing rods. Buddy, can you move the dowsing rods? We've got all night. Ask me to move the dowsing rods. Can you move the dowsing rods? Move, move them together. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Can you move the dowsing rods? Move them together. Rods? Relax. Relax. Move the dowsing rods. Not you. Him. Oh. <laughs> 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 whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. Are you here, buddy? Did you do that? No. Okay. I had her hand. So I'm like, I didn't move it. Okay. 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 He's coming in. Did he used to come up on your shoulder at all? Yeah. Okay, that's where he is. Now here comes the tricky part. Ask him to open the dowsing rods if he can. He may do it. Buddy, Ask him to can open you them. Open the dowsing rods. Open the dowsing rods, buddy. Buddy, open the dowsing rods. Are you doing this? You can't be. I'm holding your head. Open the dowsing rods, buddy. Ask him again. Buddy, can you open the dowsing rods? Open please? them all the way. Buddy, open them all the way. All the way, buddy. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. And you're not doing this, right? No. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Your baby misses you. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try? Here we go. I have them and I don't know what to do with them, so that's why I have a lot of jewelry. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> it's pretty gold, right? We're going to become good friends. <laughs> Just hold them tight. We don't want them to move on their own. Okay. Um, yeah, because I have them, but I don't know what to do with them. We don't want them to move on their own, but you want them to move. When you feel them move, then you let them move. Okay. Just don't go or just relax. It smells like burning candle to me. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. Somebody asked me about that earlier. I think that's about the second time this room's had that smell. Interesting. Now, yeah, definitely do, over here. Do we have anyone burning any candles no. in here? Okay. Congratulations, guys. Mm -hmm. Nice. Should we do the, uh, the hair dryer test on the wood? Yeah, watch it. Want me to get some Pam sprayed on the window? Right okay, guys. What's that? No, no, no. I, I, this is good right here. All right. Um, so everyone can see, here's this shut it out fireplace I was talking about. If you look in that corner, the shadow, the shadow is ridiculous, so, you know, you can't even that. Um, overall impressions of this room? I see a den. A den, okay. Interesting. You see a bedroom. You see a bedroom. Yeah, bedroom. Okay. Uh, feelings. Let's start using some good adjectives here. Peaceful. You're getting peaceful, okay. Warmth. Okay. In a warm feeling, it feels a little cool in here. I would side with you yeah. that it's it's. I feel like. Well, let's not make. Let's wait until you guys switch rooms. What else? Tell me the setup of this room. Where? What was here? Bed over there. 
okay, that over there, what would be right here where I am? Carpet. Carpet, okay. I've seen too many uh, fire stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they actually had the little protections that we have nowadays. Probably not. Probably not. Probably no. Not. So no. I'd be a little leery of ambers flying out onto highly combustible for the day. I, yeah, and I would probably assume too that it, back then it was just second thought, you know, mm -hmm. that you were aware of what was going on. I know in front of my hearts at my house I've got my wood floor all burned with pock marks from sure. ashes. Sure. I'm really into the fact that we've got this candle smell in here. Yeah. And for me, what I like about it is it's not a cigarette smell. No. It's not a sage smell. It's not a match smell. It is a definite wax, wax burning smell. And the fact that there are two candles up there. We have had. Yeah, it smells like they've been lit. Yeah, the fact that we have now you guys are the last group here for the night, and no other groups have smelled that in here. And we have done the same controlled, same experiment, same thing that I just asked you to do. Very cool. Very very cool. And if I'm not mistaken, these have never been lit. New? Nope. No, never been lit. So that is, uh, it, it was my goal that everyone had somewhat of an experience tonight. And I think we're getting lucky. I think we're, we're doing that. So that's awesome. Okay. I'm going to give you a few more minutes. Keep working on your overall impression of this. I'm going to go discuss what's going on in that front room, and then we're going to switch. Okay. Okay. All right. I know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut that door just so that the smell goes away. Okay. Hey. Hey. Okay. Okay. Overall impressions. Let's hear it. <laughs> You're getting serene. Okay. Give me a use for this room. What was this room used as? I, I kind of thought that maybe there was a baby in here. Very interesting. Really? Yeah. I was wondering. I'm like Where would the bed go? You know, if it was mm -hmm. just it seemed like it's big enough for an adult bedroom. What's the overall feeling in here? It's a nice feeling. I, it's I nice don't feel feeling. uncomfortable at all in here. Kind of warm and fuzzy? Yeah. 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 It's very, very peaceful. Yeah. We didn't even really talk. <laughs> nice. We just, just kind of hung out. It's like, oh, yeah. Describe to me. Did, all right, so where would the cradle have been? Well, I don't, would it have keep, been right in front of the, mm, not in front well, of the Well, probably fireplace. wouldn't have been in front, but keep in mind they weren't completely as afraid of fire as we are because it was something of a necessity. So it probably would have been... Maybe in the, either yeah. or maybe in the middle, so I don't know. Okay. Somewhere in this area. I'm seeing a, like a rocking chair in that corner uh -huh. over there, close to the fire. But, you know, kind of hanging out there. Very cool. I'm seeing some nice runner rugs kind of running this way, the two yeah. doorways. But definitely nice and quiet down there. Mm. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? I think there's a bookshelf from here. Where? I, like, right over there. Right between, between the two windows. Between the two windows, yeah. I could see that. What are you feeling as far as the use of the room? Are you agreeing? Is it a bedroom? Or do you see something else? No, I, I see that. Well, I didn't think it was an adult bedroom. Okay. I, I kind of felt like there were women in here. Okay. Um, so, I was kind of thinking, like, I was thinking, like, a little... Tiny couch or chair was in here. And tiny. Was in why, there. why do you say tiny? As in, like, like a as little like, two seater or okay. just a single chair. chair. Yeah. Okay. More like a social room. 
Yeah, like a sitting room? Like a sitting room. It was kind of where I'm Which is sitting. interesting because I believe we talked about teapots being set up on a table not too long ago. Mm -hmm. I think of it as like maybe like where women went also. And like it was like just a little tea room where they went to Which get is, away from the bed. And that's, that's exactly what a sitting room was. Yeah. yeah. Come in here, chat, and this knit. area here too. That's true. Okay. But it's definitely not a negative for a period. Okay. I, I didn't get anything there. Like I said, I could curl up on the floor and fall asleep in here. No problem. All right. Keep this in mind. We are now going to switch rooms. Sounds like they're having a good time so far at Tinny Gatehouse. Let's check in with hot mama, Chris Gartland, who's got a little one coming on the way and see what she thinks of the location. When I first got to the Tinny Gate House, I really didn't think that it was going to be that much fun. But then all these people started showing up, and it is fantastic. I absolutely love it here. I just hope we get the evidence to prove it. Tap me on the shoulder. Looks like everybody's having a good time. Wish I could have been there. Oh well, can't win them all. But Mike Roberts is there. He's having a good time filming and checking things out with Chris and Andy and Cece. Speaking of Andy, we haven't seen him in a while. Let's check in and see how he's doing. Uh, I'm Andy Andrews. Uh, we had the investigation at the carriage house tonight. We had a great time, great turnout. Um, I think for me tonight, one of the things that really worked well is that we took the separate groups, we all split up into separate rooms, and really didn't use any equipment. So the fact that everyone was split up and we all got the same impressions as far as what the use of the room could have been, which then when we corresponded to our history of it matched up, for me that was great. Not only did we have these great evidence of these impressions, but at the same time, uh, in one of the back rooms, we actually got a phantom candle smell that was uh, picked up on by everyone in the room, and everyone agreed with that. Uh, when switching to the next group, the second group didn't pick up on it at all, so it was very unique and, and geared right towards that particular group. Uh, not only did we experience that, but then we also had two people sitting in the conference room who began to feel very ill, very sick. Uh, they were going to their throat feeling like um, they were being choked or pain in their throat or their neck. Uh, later we found out that that was actually the room where uh, a gentleman had passed away with throat cancer. So for me tonight, uh, we had a great investigation, great time. I think everyone really enjoyed themselves and went home with possible uh, thoughts that, hey, maybe something really is here. Sounds like Sharon Kincaid had an interesting experience at Tinny Gate House. And little did she know, there's good reason for it in the room it happened. Let's listen and see what happens. Alrighty, I'm Sharon Kincaid from Southern Atlantic Paranormal. Um, I got to come here on this event thanks to uh, my good friend Mike Roberts. Met some wonderful people here. Um, I had an awesome uh, personal experience upstairs on the second floor with Andy Andrews. Um, we were just having a group discussion and I kind of felt real heavy and tightness in my chest and around my throat area and talked to one of the historians here and find out that there was a gentleman who had passed away up there with throat cancer. So it was kind of awesome to, to be able to have that experience. I had an awesome time here at the Tenney Gate House in Methuen, Massachusetts. We got some great Class A EVPs. In fact, we got about two to three Class A EVPs with each group that I participated in. And it was the greatest thing to be able to see people that recognize their actual parents' voices on the EVPs. They came through loud and clear. We had people using the dowsing rods. Um, didn't work all the time, but for the most part it worked. I was able to educate people in the field of metaphysics and high tech and blend them together and we had a really great time. Um, they treated me like family here so it's a lot of fun. I can't wait to come back and do another event with Mike Roberts. And who the hell is he anyway? I have no idea but I love him with all my heart. And again, uh, this event was a total success. Everybody had fun. They were talking about Andy, they were talking about Chris, they were talking about Mike and Gary as well. So we had a great time all together. I'm happy I was here and uh, next time we do an event, you gotta check us out. Bye-bye. Ooh, Cece the Huntress. <laughs> Love her. Love her energy. Isn't she fun?
I said everybody, not the kids in the truck. All right? Everybody, on the count of three, the magic will happen. Everybody with me. One, two, three. Olivia, a second Olivia, Olivia, will you come up here and get your hand? As you can see, the reference. Why are you capturing this poor white soul, sir? He's not capturing your soul, is he? No. No? No. I gave that to him a long time okay, ago. Okay, good, good. So you're married? Yes. How long have you two been betrothed? A year. A year? Ah, oh, so still newlyweds, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you visiting Salem today? Yes. Yes, you will hear the cries of witchcraft. I'm Bridget Bishop. Are you a witch? I'm not a witch, no. Bridget Bishop is, however. And she is cried out upon, and we're going to a restaurant at 1.30 today. All right. Actually, it's 1.30 right now, so 2.30. I apologize, I'm mixing up my shows. <laughs> it's been a long day. And if you'd like to come, we will arrest her at 2.20 in right across on the other side of the pen. Okay. Be cool. Thank you. It's free. You can watch it. And Are you going to set her on fire? The, no, we do not set her on fire, good men. That is barbaric. We are Puritans. We hang them. It says in the Bible that you do not hurt your enemies. So we let them go in the least painful way possible, which is by hanging them and it snaps the neck. I'm but, sorry, what was that? You're a witch? She's a witch. I am not a witch. <laughs> and I like this with you good people. Yes, thank you. All right, and that's all the information in case you want to attend the trial later. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thanks so much for joining us this time, guys. Wish I could have been there, but somebody's got to be holding down the fort and uh, finding you guys some new hot locations to bring to you. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, remember, keep it creepy. Ooh, slice furnace.